okay, okay. I think I'm a little bit squinty here, but that's okay. Um, you guys that subscribe to my channel, you know that I'm a big gamer. I do focus on a lot of things on my channel, technology and, and computers and things, but I am a gamer. I like to consider myself a gamer. When you get older, which I am, I'm not, I'm just a few years away from 40, um, you don't get to game as much because of responsibilities, work and things like that. When I do game, it tends to be on my mobile phone or a handheld if I'm on a, you know, a train or a flight or when I'm playing with friends. I still do play like FIFA and you know a lot of multiplayer games with my friends. What I like to do in this video is just share with you all the games and systems that I've got in the house. It's not all the games I've ever had. You know, over the years, I've sold a lot of the systems I've bought. Um, I gave some to my little brother, you know, gave him like the PS2 and things like that. And there's been a lot of games I've gave to friends and I've traded away and things like that. But you will get an idea of the type of games I've bought over the years. I'm going to be showing you a lot of older systems as well and some old gaming magazines. So if you're a gamer, I hope you enjoy the video. So starting off, you can see I've got my Wii U pad. Um, I've got the Pro Controller here as well. That's actually one of the best controllers I've ever used. It's a shame that, you know, it's not being used again. Uh, it's, it's, it was kind of underused. It only worked in certain games, but it was fantastic. I've got four Wiimotes there as well. And this is the current mess that I've got in my living room. I've got my PS4, I've got my Wii U, and I've got... You can see, well, you can see all the games. They're not really in any order now. They're in a mess. I've got... A couple of old Zelda Wii games, um, Super Mario Bros. U, Battlefront, Mortal Kombat, Shovel Knight, and up here you can see I've been playing FIFA, been playing Uncharted 4 for the second time, Madden 17, The Last of Us, quality game, Grand Theft Auto 5, and obviously I've got a lot of games bought um, online, just like digital games. A PS3 is kind of in limbo at the moment, it's just sitting in my bedroom and it's not even connected to a TV but I'm going to try and put it somewhere at one point I don't know where I'll need to find it at home so I'm in my office now which is where I normally film and you can see a collection of the games I've got most of them are still here I've lost a few PS3 games um, in fact let's start with the Wii U Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for the Wii FIFA 13 Batman great game Mass Effect 3. Zombie U is a really good game actually. I've not even played Call of Duty on the Wii U yet. I don't know why I never played it. Watch Dogs. Um, I've got a couple of other Wii games there. Metroid. Punch-Out. Mario Kart 8. And we've got PSC games here and I pretty much get most of the classics. Um, Tekken 6, Grand Theft Auto. Sports Champions I've got. and um, You can see there. I can't remember what you call them now, the ones, I've got two of them, and they're, they're actually really good, you get, you can play Frisbee Golf and things like that, a couple of Madden games, I've even got Madden 16, which is probably the last PS3, my, PS3 game I bought, um, Little Big Planet was very disappointing in my opinion, Metal Gear Solid 4 was great, but short, um, Buzz was good if you had four or five people in drinking, the old Bluetooth headset for Call of Duty games, Burnout Paradise, Tiger Woods, Fight Night, UFC, 2K14, that's the wrestling. Virtua Fighter 5, Street Fighter 4, Soul Calibur 5. Got a couple of Call of Duty games about the place as well. There's Modern Warfare 3, World at War, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, and Red Dead Redemption, Arkham Asylum. I've been putting my handhelds up here. <laughs> One of the guys said some horrible, that's why they're sitting there. Um, so up here I've got, if I can get out, I've got my PSP Go, still one of my favourite handhelds. I've got my Game Boy Micro, which I've only had this a year or so, still love it. Um, this is my original Advance SP that I had as soon as it came out, and my little brother gave me it back recently. In here, I can do this one handed, I don't think I need to use my mouth here. And here I've got... Zelda branded 3DS, which can only play games in America, and I've not put uh, games on it yet, so that's just kind of sitting there. Um, get, can I get some old Game Boy games about here? Classic. King of the Ring. Pokemon Yellow. 
And I've got some other games along, along here. My, uh, Mario Kart, Road Rash, Grand Theft Auto. My little brother's got most of the other games. Yoshi's Island, Mario Kart. I reviewed this recently. This was like a little handheld thing from China. It was like 10, 15 pounds. And, you know, it's pretty terrible, but it does have a lot of classic games on it, so because of that, I still quite like it. But it is pretty terrible, <laughs> if I'm honest. So that's all the kind of games that are hanging about my office. So, oh, bring you round. So, most of the games from a long time ago, like past 10 years, that are all up upstairs in my loft, or attic if you're from America. So, let's go upstairs. Check it out. So this is my mess of an attic, uh, or a loft as we would call it. You can see a lot of the older systems around here. Kept a lot of boxes. Um, a little bit dark but I've got a light here that will hopefully brighten up a little bit. So I better get my ass up and we can start checking some things out. So I've got a lot of boxes up here. Um, many of them I should be keeping and many of them I probably shouldn't. But what I do is when I buy things, I tend to keep the boxes for a while in case I sell them on. And then when I realise I don't, I just throw them out in the bin. But that's not always what happens because I only come up here when I need to. So I've got the lights down here so hopefully it won't be too dark. Um, so it's, it's hard to know where to start. But I'll just kind of get through the boxes and show you what we've got. Underneath this disgustingly old dirty grey suitcase type thing, we have probably the best gaming system ever made. Oh, look at that! You see I had my stickers there when I was a kid. So, get that up. So, obviously this is a European one. It's, got, it's not, it's different in America. But it still goes yellow over time, it goes a little bit. Um, I'm going to try, I'll try and, you know, some of these older systems, I will try and do another video and I'll try and get them out and, and you know do a video for you guys you know I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work I mean it's dusty but hopefully it still works these things are built to last you can see there it says PAL version apologies for the autofocus this camera sometimes it is a little bit bad for that um, so I've got a universal adapter there because of games like this which are from America so you can see an Amer American cartridge and a European one side by side. And the European SNES and the, the Japanese one were pretty much the same. Um, obviously there was region locking, but this game I ended up paying, and this was like 1993 or something like that, so about £75, and I, I think I, I paid £35 and traded four mod, like, like latest games, so it was actually worth every penny, I loved it. Uh, Kevin Keegan's player manager, Sim City. Absolutely fantastic. Mario World, Super Mario World. This isn't all the games why we should probably find the other cartridges somewhere else. Super Tennis. Street Fighter Alpha 2. You can see I love Street Fighter as a kid. Mortal Kombat. Probably bought from some sort of rental place. That's why it's got lots of stickers on it. The dust on that's ridiculous. See it's actually designed specifically for the Super Nintendo. Um, two Super Mario Worlds, don't ask me why. Madden 95, like a bit of John Madden, Mario Kart. NHL PA Hockey 93, I can't even remember if that was any good. And F0. Now I've got a lot more games than that, so that's just the ones that are in there. It's, um, it's quite interesting though, looking at the old console. Oh, we've got some games hidden underneath as well. Uh, there's a little puzzle game called Zoop and NBA Jam Tournament Edition. You can see it's actually it's held up well. Let's explore some more and we'll see what else we find. So, super nice box to the side and you can see a small collection of the computer game magazines that I've got. Um, I used to buy gaming magazines all the time, and I've, you know, I've kept most of them. 
can see I've got another box of them there. I think there's some more somewhere. Um, CNVG, this was a, a hugely popular magazine. I remember selling it, I had lots of the early ones and then I traded them in with a friend for a game, which I probably sh should have just kept the, the magazines to be honest. There's that many, I mean I don't even know where to start, there's that many. I used to love, in the UK there's magazines like CNVG, the Sega Saturn magazine, uh, Mean Machines, Saturn Power, more CNVG, Sega Saturn official magazine. Yeah, there's a lot of CNVGs. I've got a lot of Mean Machines and Nintendo magazine. So basically there was a magazine called Mean Machines and then it split in the UK to two two magazines. I think one was called Nintendo Magazine System and it was an it was officially endorsed and then there was one called I think it was like Mean Machine Sega or something like that. But I mainly bought the Nintendo ones because my brother had the Mega Drive, I, I didn't, so it was mostly the Nintendo magazines I was buying at the time. Beavis and Butthead magazines. There's old comic books as well. I could be rich here. I could be rich. Captain America. See these are probably I've got some old Judge Dreads. I'm not I'm not a big comic book guy, but I've got a lot of these in their own fairly good condition. Um I'm not a big comic book guy, but I probably bought them at one point or I traded them for a friend or something like that. So over here I've got my PS4 box and you can see at the side what I've got in this one. I've got the Dreamcast and I've got the Sega Saturn. So these boxes aren't the best to crack really easily. So I've got the Dreamcast original box. Got Sega Saturn classic system. I love this. One of those consoles that a lot of people in hindsight said it wasn't that good, it didn't sell as well, but I loved it. I believe this is for the Saturn as well, not the Dreamcast. We've got the Dreamcast controllers. So for any of you younger guys, this was the console after the Saturn. This was the Dreamcast controller, and if there's a space there, it's because you had two spaces behind here, so this one was a rumble pack in here you had what was called a VMU um, virtual machine unit or something like that and it would be a little LCD display it was uh, quite a decent joystick, like this um, the kind of thumb stick here was good for games like Knights no other system had things like, well the Nintendo 64 had a kind of spinny controller but it's quite a good controller and we've got the plugs, we've got Sega Saturn Joy pads, which are kind of like Mega Drive ones, really. And probably easier if I go to the side here and you can show you the games. So these are all Sega Saturn games Sega Rally, Daytona, NBA Live 97, Alien Trilogy, Sonic Jam, PG Tour, Virtua Fighter 2, Athlete Kings, World League Soccer 98, Command and Conquer, Virtua Cop 2. There's maybe some other things in there, but chances of me finding them are slim. So underneath the box with the Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn, I've got more magazines. Um, I don't know why that's here. PC game, Civilization 4. Mean Machine Sega, I was correct. And Nintendo Magazine System. Used to always get free books and things like that. So I've got a lot of kind of tips books there that I've kept. And then I've got magazines underneath them, I believe. So I think I tried to keep them in order, but... Nintendo 64 magazine, SNES Force. I basically, I mean, I kind of started buying games, uh, buying magazines, probably about 1990, around that time. So, what next? This one. So by now you should have realised that. I'll get some light here. You should probably realise that I don't have a lot of space up here to actually store things, so everything's kind of packed in quite tightly. We've got a Logic 3 cheap gamepad for the N64, or the GameCube, sorry, GameCube. Um, okay, the original white PSP, which I imported from Japan, and I got it before it came out in the UK. I think my brother still got this. Just a cheap PC joypad. Some PC games here, Halo, Football Manager, Championship Manager, 2000. Oh, what have we got under there? 
Did you see that? Did you see the... Look at this. Oh, my baby. The Atari 2600. Superb. Uh, Nintendo DS. That was, I got that just before... I got that before it came out in the UK as well because my brother was in America. Brought it back for me. Um, yep, yeah, so... These are the original three games I had and I played these religiously for many, many years. Phoenix, it's kind of like a Galaxian clone. Um, Galaxian and Pac-Man. I, I had combat and a few other games I got a loan of at one point and then, for whatever reason, they've not lasted. But so many happy memories because I think this thing, this was probably the first game console that I spent all my time playing and nearly all of the time I spent playing it, it was on black and white televisions. It wasn't on colour televisions until um, I got older because back then in the 80s it was, you know, your main television that your parents had in the living room was probably colour. But, you know, secondary televisions was probably like an old one that they had and that's what I had. It was an old black and white television and this is what it was plugged into. And here I have what appears to be a box of boxes. Fantastic. Um, again, I, I used to try and keep my systems, um, the boxes for systems from a young age just from a reselling point of view and then I wouldn't sell them. Got the original Super Nintendo box, Street Fighter 2, um, Sega Saturn. See these things, like why did I keep these th things? These are, I should just throw these out. Um, PlayStation Move controllers, things like that, but maybe they're worth something to someone. But yeah, um, I do realise that, you know, from a collection point of view, a collecting point of view, these things are probably worth a little bit of money. The system's a little, worth a little bit more, but I don't see myself selling them, if I'm honest. You can see some of the games here to the side that was advertised when you first got the system. Super Mario World, F-Zero, Super Tennis, Super Soccer, and Super R-Type. And it's got one, two, three there for dates, 1991, 92, 93. If I pull this out, you will see that I got the Super Street Fighter 2 edition, obviously. So this is the box that's underneath the box of boxes and hopefully the light isn't too bad for you guys. It seems to be N64 world here. So what have we got? We've got the original N64 Lilac Wars. That's actually in mint condition. I didn't even know that I had that, as far as keeping that box. Um, yeah, this seems to be all be N64 stuff, apart from Zelda, Skyward Sword. I only bought this a couple of years ago. So, got lots of original, uh, the original Nintendo 64 controls. I had four of them. That was one of the reasons I loved the N64, was from the very first day I just went out and bought four, so that, you know, I could play GoldenEye and things like that. Um, the games are actually in these boxes, I can feel. A little bit weighty. So we've got Micro Machines Turbo, uh, 64 Turbo, Worms Armageddon. Oh, talk about the best wrestling game ever made. WCW NW Revenge, and the one after it, it was like a WWE one, 2000, that was, the two of them were excellent. So, let's uh, we'll see if I can get through some of these games. That's like one, it's obviously from the, the video shop. Um, what we got here? NBA Jam, 99, Forsaken. I think that was a first person shooter. Yes it was. The Ultimate 360 Deathmatch. And that's the lights falling down. So, Mario 64 is an obvious choice for anyone who buys a six, uh, Nintendo 64. Mario Golf. And again, I've got all the manuals and the games in here. Mission Impossible. That was actually quite a good game. The new Tetris. Not the old one. Um, I remember this being quite bad. Another video game one. Castlevania. I think it's in there. Can't beat Castlevania. F Zero X. Now, as a controller pack, I think there's a game underneath there. All Star Baseball '99. Now you can see already that I do end up buying the same games for every system, and I continue to do that. You know, my brother got um, 
Madden 90, was it 92 or 3 for the Sega Mega Drive, the Genesis, and then uh, the Genesis for those in North America. And um, yeah, I bought it for pretty much every system since. Hardcore ECW Evolution, what have we got here? That was a great game. There wasn't many football games um, back then, not as many. Well, there was a lot of different games, but there wasn't many good ones. That was probably one of the best. ISS. Um, this one was okay. Michael Owens, WS2000. That was actually quite a good game. Probably one of the best games ever made. If you've never played this before, people, it's one of the, it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic, absolute classic game. Kobe Bryant's uh, courtside. Remember that being okay. And of course, as I said, Madden. He's everywhere. Overall, um, you know, as far as systems goes, I, I mean, it's, whenever it comes to debates about the best system, it, it's a lot of it's down to nostalgia. But I do feel that um, the SNES is probably the best for me, and I'd maybe put the NES behind it and then the N64. But it really depends what you grew up with. You know, when I when I had the N64, I was like, you know, like at university and things like that. So it's different from playing games when you're. Seven years old, eight years old, ten years old, that kind of thing. On to the next box. Okay, so the original box for my PS2, and it was a slim I bought because I didn't buy it at launch. Um, was that a driving wheel? Oh, that's the. So this was for the PS2, and my brother still got both of these. So the the, the slim PS2 slim would join on to the screen. This was actually pretty fantastic. The only problem was the audio was horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. It was really, really bad. Can't stress that highly enough. But overall, the two of them put together was actually really, really good. Got another N64 game there. Worms Armageddon. That's for the ones. We've actually got the, the games for that in that box. So we're on a GameCube. Uh, my friend Joe still got this GameCube, but I'll, I'll try and get it back from him at one point. Do a video for you guys. So we've got NHL Blitz, UFC Throwdown, NBA Live, Kobe Bryant's NBA Courtside. He's there again. Star Wars Rogue Leader. And for you, those of you who didn't have a GameCube, or as I said, I was going to show you the cartridge, but they're probably all with my friend. Um, you can see it's just little small discs. I'm not sure I've got any games here actually. Because they're probably all with my friend, and I've just kept the boxes. International Winter Sports. <laughs> John Madden! All the time. F1 2002. SSX Tricky. This was this was really good on the GameCube. I really liked this. Really good snowboarding game. Bloody Roar. £40. So this was like a fighting game, if I remember right. You fight as a bunny and things like that. Fight like an animal. Primal Fury. Virtua Striker 3. This was actually a really good game. Very arcadey. £40. Forget how, you know, over the years prices have kind of stayed the same, so effectively the games have got cheaper. FIFA 2003. Time Splitters 2. Very good game. First person shooter. And at the end we've got Super Mario Shun Sunshine and Rocky. Um, I don't know if these are all the games yet. As I said, you know, along the, over time, a lot of games do get kind of lost along the way. And we've got the original Nintendo 64 box. And it looks like I've got more SNES stuff in here. <laughs> John Madden. <laughs> He's everywhere. Um, NBA Live 95. I remember this being one of my favourite games. John Madden 92 for the Mega Drive. I can't take credit for that, it's my brother's, and I must have took it at one point. Got California Games. One thing Sega always did right, boxes. These boxes are still mint. And these things, they're impossible to keep. Even if you package them up well, they just degrade over time. Road Rash. You, you couldn't call yourself a gamer unless you had this. This was one of the best games ever at the time. A lot of fun. Um, this is actually a video about the Mega CD. So 
So I don't think I've even got a video anymore, a VCR, Street Fighter 2 guide. Obviously, I was into games quite a lot there. And what have we got here? We've got my brother's original 16 bit Mega Drive. See, I, I was never, um, I was never someone who, you know, took an allegiance to any console. I had the NES, then the SNES, and then 64. I was always a Nintendo guy in that respect, but I didn't hate Sega. You know, my brother had the Mega Drive, and then I bought the, the Saturn, I bought the Dreamcast. So, I'm glad I never, there was a lot of people who were kind of fanboys, and they didn't, um, they didn't really give the other systems a chance, which I think silly. If you're a gamer, it doesn't really matter what system you've got. You're, you're pledging allegiance to a, a company. It's silly. Killer Instinct. I remember this because I used to play this in arcade. It's fantastic. This is the boxes for some of the games you might have saw earlier. Street Fighter Alpha 2, Super Punch Out, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. The box for this is actually mint, which it should be considering the money I paid for it. Super Mario Kart. You know, as far as the you know the condition of certain boxes, it really is a crapshoot because you package them away and some of them seem to do well and others don't. Syndicate, that was a kind of strategy game. It's more like a, a, an Amiga style game. You know, something you'd see on the Amiga or the Atari ST, but they ported it over to the console. So before I go into the last box, I thought I'd backtrack a little bit because I didn't show you the original Dreamcast console, which is actually in the box. Or the games, I kind of jumped past it because I think a controller was over it and I didn't show you the Nintendo 64 console. So, this is the original Nintendo 64 box and it's in fairly good condition considering it's made of cardboard and it's age etc. It's interesting to see how it was sold at the time. You know, you've got Rave Race 64, Mario 64, Pilot Wing 64, classic. Blast Corps, that was a game that kind of missed the mark. Shadows of the Empire, Star Wars, Mario Kart, standard really. So, let's get the box open and we'll see the console. So, in this box I've got the three other controllers, but this is the original one. The one that came with the console and it's all fairly packaged up quite well, you know. Got the rumble pack at the back. This was, um, I think, I think the Nintendo 64 was really innovative as far as um, how they moved controllers forward. You know, with the with the controller here, just the way it was designed. It was, a, it really was very different to everything else that was out at the time. You know, the PlayStation controller and um, even going back to you know certain Dreamcast controllers and things like that. The N64, um, it really was quite ahead of its time in, in my opinion. So I'm trying to remember the dates but I think this was going against the PS1 and the Saturn, I think. Um, yeah, it's a really good controller and you know obviously with, with Mario 64 and things like that you could move it like that. Still got all the original cables, everything's packaged up really well actually which I'm surprised about. And we've got the actual console. Now, get this one handed. Now the, oh, you know, unlike the Super NES that's went yellow, this isn't, you know, it just needs a dust off really. Obviously because it's been in a box rather than that insane little suitcase. But this is one of the reasons why I bought four controllers, you know, at the time it came out, it was unheard of for a system to have four controller ports. And you nearly always had two and then you had to buy all these multi-tap things to connect all the different controllers. But um, here you had, oh, Causing an absolute havoc here. Um, you can see here, here you had the kind of expansion port, and this was used by certain games uh, to add additional RAM and things like that. It's used by Perfect Dark, that was probably the one that was probably used by most people. But it's quite a portable little console, quite cool, and I think it still looks great. So, you know, looking at it, it's, it's something I like to in reintroduce into my home. You know, maybe get some games set up. I think it'd be cool to do that because, uh, you know, the, the idea of just sitting playing Goldeneye again appeals to me. It is a, a great little system. And if you can pick one up second hand, I would definitely recommend it. So, I just packed the box away and I just had a quick look. I don't think I showed you this earlier. My original SNES controller. Another 
universal adapter there and the way this worked was you would plug in the I think it was American or Japanese game at the top and then you put a British one or European one at the back and the system would think it was playing this game you know as far as region locking goes but it would actually be playing the foreign game but this controller is quite cool it was um, it was actually you know it was a third party one but it was quite good in that you know it's got all these it's all kind of wrapped up I'll show you it's got all these little um, dials for rapid fire but it was, it's quite, it was just interesting the way that it had it, you know, two different settings for each button, so you could go brrrr, um, and it was the same as slow as well. But it was actually quite a good control in its own right, and you can see they've, they've just copied it identical uh, to the original one. The only difference is they've kind of moved some things around just to add in the buttons, but from a practicality point of view, I always remember that playing well. And you never really used it, it was more for sports games, you know, like, track and field that kind of you know that kind of thing that would really come in handy but it's like actually quite a good controller and I remember it being a little bit cheaper as well. So I'm just coming back to this box because I realised earlier you know that I didn't examine this as thoroughly as I should have. Um you can see I've got three I think Dreamcast controls here. All the games are piled here. Now the Dreamcast was a system where the fans kind of killed it by buying, I mean I, I basically had about two thirds original games but I did buy some copy games because they were they were everywhere. Um, and actually there was a point where you couldn't actually buy any original games anymore, the shops, I couldn't, you couldn't really find them in shops anymore. But you went to like the marketplaces in Glasgow and you know there were people selling copied games and you didn't really have to do anything to play them, they just they would play well. So what have we got here? Dreamcast Millionaire. Who wants to be a millionaire? Soul Calibur, that was one of the best games on the system. Tomb Raider, ready to rumble boxing. Now, I think I've got other games for this somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, Christmas Nights, that was Sega Saturn. That was a great game, absolutely brilliant. Sega Exports DC. You know, I, I'm, I'm bound to get more games for this, Tony Hawks. I'm, I'm bound to have more games for this somewhere. I just can't seem to find them today. So that's the original, god that's the original Mega Drive. I thought it was a Saturn one when I picked it up there. It's the original Mega Drive controller. Still like that, still a, a classic controller. And the BMUs down here, I might actually be in the... No, it must be in, in the box. Okay, so let's get the box open and we'll see what the original Dreamcast is like. So this is another box that I've kept in fairly good condition. Um, let's see. Um, so you can see at the back how it could be ex expanded with the controller. It's a race controller arcade stick. I didn't have these and I didn't know anyone that had it. Now the virtual memory thing, actually I think I just saw it there. Yeah. So that's called Virtual Memory Unit, VMU, and you can see it in here, so you can see it looks like just the LCD display, but I should probably get this out, there we go, this was the VMU, so these ones had rumble packs at the back, if I can get them out, so you could put in a rumble pack like that, put batteries in it, but the VMU is what you put in all the time. Now, th this, you can see sleep mode A and B. You could actually use this on its own, outside of the Dreamcast, and you could use it... I can't remember if it was kind of like a Tamagotchi type of thing, but you could check your saves, and beyond that, I can't remember what you can do, but it was... it was You could take it out, and then you could, you know, when you're, when you're ready, you would plug it back in, and if you wanted rumble, plug it in like that. You know, it's, it's interesting to go back now and, and realise that they were still trying to figure out how to do rumble and things like that and build it into the controller. And they, you know, they didn't build it in. They had to do it separately, but it was there when you wanted it. So, um, back to the box. Yeah, it's kind of, tell, you can see it's there, it's telling you about the processor and all that. Um, wait, okay, features four controller ports, Hitachi HS4 RA, CS processor, 128-bit 3D engine, 64 channel sound, 
uh, GD ROM technology, one gigabyte storage. Networking capability, the Dreamcast was one of the first to do that, if not the first, if I remember right. But I'm sure there's an obscure system that did some sort of internet thing before there. Cables, cables, cables. Or the ethernet. Right, I think this is upside down so we have to turn it around. So, hopefully I've got the light okay there for you. I know it's a little bit dark up here. Um, yeah, this is it. It's the original Dreamcast. And it's kind of went the same yellow way that the... I don't know if coming through because it's quite dark. It's kind of went the same yellow way as, as the, the, the SNES. Just that material, that plastic. You can see four ports at the front, which is why I went out and bought four controllers, even though I can, I can only find three. It's kind of, yeah, it's got that yellowy, plasticky tone. So, um, the Dreamcast was a great system. It was uh, it was quite portable. I think it was out at the same time as the PS2, if I remember right. And I believe I was going to buy a PS1 when I bought the Saturn. And I think it sold out and I just bought the Saturn because it was such a good deal. And then I, I never bought the PS1 because my friends had them. And I think with the Dreamcast, I bought the PS2 again was selling. The, the Dreamcast was going for a bargain when it came out. So I bought the Dreamcast and then it was like a year or so later I bought the PS2. I love this system though. Absolutely amazing. And kind of killed itself because, I mean, it was going against the PS2, which is one of the best systems of all time. One of the best selling at least. Um... PS2 was a great system, but yeah, that was the Dreamcast, and this is all the crap that comes with it. Lots of internet stuff, way ahead of its time. So I believe this is the last box, and this one isn't very exciting. Got a couple of Wii U boxes, but the blue Black Yeti microphone. What's this? What's this? PlayStation camera, the Wii U box. More Wii U boxes. Yeah, pretty uneventful to finish that off. So guys, that is my gaming collection. This is what I've got up in my loft. This is, I would say 90% of what I've kept over the years. Um, my friend's got my GameCube. My little brother's got my PS2 now. There's a couple of games over at my mum and dad's. You know, up, up in the, their loft, you know, a lot of games and things kicking about. Got most of them, but not all of them. And over the years, a lot of the games and systems got um, just get lost along the way. I gave them to friends, I left them at friends' houses and things like that. Now, you know, um, it's a fairly long video, but at the same time, I th I've obviously rushed through a lot of the things. I could have spent an hour just looking through old gaming magazines. I could have spent an hour just focusing on one system and looking at the games. I hope you've enjoyed the video, but if you'd like me to focus on a particular system in the future, then what I'll try and do is bring the, the console out, try and plug it up and plug it in, you know, play some of the games and record me playing some of the games to see if they're as good as I remember or whether I'm just looking through rose tinted glasses. Um, I don't tend to come up here that often, I mean what I'd like to do, I've always put it off because I think when I move house what I'll do is I'll set up a, a nice display and I'll put on my old consoles because I'd rather have them out there and being used than sitting there. But you know, I've only got a small two beds in my house, it's just not practical at the moment. And coming up here, your legs get sore because you're always crouching because the way my house is designed, I can't actually, like, floor it properly. But I hope you've enjoyed the video game, uh, the video guys. I hope you've enjoyed me looking at a lot of the old systems. I have actually kept a lot of um, the games and consoles and magazines that I grew up with. A lot of people threw those away, and I did too, for a lot of, a lot of things, but I'm glad I kept a lot of it. Um... And gaming, you know, as much as I love gaming, when I go back and play older games, there's a big nostalgia feeling. I think it's, you know, anyone anyone who plays the PS2, that grew up with the PS2, would love the PS2. Anyone that grew up with the PS1 will say that's the best system. Um, I, 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 it's, I enjoy those debates, but at the same time, I, I don't think anyone's right or wrong. It's just subjective. We all enjoy playing video games, and, you know, I'd love to do more videos for you guys. Um... 
I'm just looking at all these old games, Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, Super NES and things like that, and they're all awesome. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If there's any games um, that you saw, that you thought found interesting, please let me know. If you had any of these systems, please let me know. I do love reminiscing about some of these old systems, because I spent, you know, all my youth playing them. And, thanks for watching. Please do leave a comment. Share, like the video if you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care.